Okay, what about the minutes of October 9th, Board of Public Works meeting? Move to approve. Okay. Any comments? I provided it here to be Jim. Excuse me. Can she, oh, but did you take, oh, actually, did you take them? Maybe you did. No, uh, it was, I was, it was BJ. It was, I was thinking I was, was the BJ time before. before. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, should I Is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, yep. Yeah. Are you looking yeah. to approve them this evening, subject to the changes we suggested? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I think that they need to hear what the changes are. Okay, go for it. The, this is Jim talking about the generator problem at the um, sewage plant. I think it should read as the generator is not functioning or not functioning, and we are renting a generator for a month. It just doesn't. Just as a flow, right? The word "not" was missing. The way it read was it was not good, and I think it was a lot worse than that. It was not functioning. The generator. Mm -hmm. The generator, did, we shut down the low test prematurely. Yeah. We got about an hour and a half into it, and oil pressure was dropping, temperatures were going up, and they kind of said, stop the test before we blow the engine. So the decision to rent one wasn't much of a choice. There was no it was other not. choice. It was a, actually, it was an emergency procurement through the state. We were able to do that. So we've had a motion on the table. It's been seconded. David has um, uh -huh. made some yes, com comments. Is everybody in agreement with those comments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I asked Anne Marie Schauer uh, to be here to talk about item yeah, yeah, yeah. Levy, excuse me, <laughs> Levy, excuse me, about item number two under old business. Yes, I just assume we finished this. Again. We need That's to vote. okay. Yeah. yeah, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. I abstain. I wasn't present. Okay. So, should we take something else? I should have abstained, too. Is that a problem? Were you present at the meeting? That last, last go round, no. If you weren't at the meeting, you can't approve the minutes. You can't. <laughs> I abstain. Then you might have to table that item. No, you don't. Well, I thought you just needed a quorum to bring up the vote. Oh. To hold the meeting. I don't think you need a quorum to, to give you to actually vote. Okay. I stand. I don't know. I stand unknowing. Well, I <laughs> Don't you need a quorum for a vote? That's just you need a quorum to hold me. Well, if BJ finds out otherwise, then we can have a revisit of the right. other minutes of the meeting, but as it stands, it's they can approve. <laughs> no, I don't think it's your bad. So I think it's, we don't know. <laughs> motion, motion to take item uh, would be number three or number two. Number two, out of order, uh, Ned? So yes, moved. please. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, Terry had asked at the two meetings ago <clears throat> that we have a small presentation to you on the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. And currently, where we are finishing the first quarter in fiscal year 14. So, we have some a spreadsheet in front of you. And I'd like to ask Anne Marie to come in and speak tonight on it. I'm going to show you where we're going at this moment, um, even though it's not the full year, but you asked for a quarterly update. Mm -hmm. Emery? Oh, it's just a spreadsheet, right? <coughs> so basically what this shows you, um, we had a DOR certified free cash event at the end of uh, this year 2012, which was the beginning balance for 2013. We have 2.356819 uh, certified by DOR. And this just tries to give you, we, we don't have the DOR certification for 2013 yet. The financials aren't quite uh, completed at this point. We should get that number by January. So this is just intended to give you a sense of where we're headed with the um, landfill enterprise fund at this point. So it looks as though um, 2013 is not going to give us a deficit that's going to result in a harmful change to our free cash balance. So far, when we look at what's happening in 2014, the revised 2014 budget includes all of the encumbrances. 
that we carried over from 2013 into 2014. If you look at the bottom total revenue, there's a uh, line item called prior year encumbrance. I included that in the revenue portion because that's a source of funds. Those are funds that were appropriated in prior years and encumbered into the, the current uh, 2014 year. So the total is 2.1 million that was encumbered from 2013 into 2014, mainly due in large part to the um, closure costs that we're anticipating this year. So, so far we're, um, we're we, the, the revenue fees, uh, refuse fees, we, we didn't budget any of those for 2014, and yet we are receiving some um, old outstanding accounts receivable. So we have about $50,000 to the good um, in that category. We've basically collected the main portion of our sticker revenue, which is mainly uh, the permits that are issued. So we're at 63% of the total that we projected. It looks as though we may not get to the full amount. Right. According to last year's numbers at the same time frame, ending on September 30th, we're about 10% below in sales from the previous year. However, overall, we're down about 1,100 permits at this point um, total going forward. Of course, residents come in during the year, new, new members of the other residents come in. We're still hoping that at least five or six hundred more vehicle permits will be sold during the fiscal year at this point. But it is down about 10% from the same time frame as last year and the first quarter is the real big push to get uh, the city uh, uh, citizens to get their permits done. So the um, recycling uh, revenue so far are only 14%. We would expect that to be around 25 but we haven't received any MRF checks yet. That would be a, a large impact on that number. Um, What's a NERF check? Sorry. Really spongy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a NERF check. Oh. <laughs> that's a check from the Springfield Materials Recovery Facility. They give, and, give us a check twice a year. And it's got a base price of $15 a ton for all the cycles that we bring. If the market's better than that, we get a, a bonus per se. If it goes below that bottom price, the floor price, we still get the fifteen dollars. So this is an ongoing time. sort of just been ongoing for okay. right. fifteen, twenty Sorry. years. Yep. It looks as though our sales drop metal is right on our projection. Um, the other miscellaneous is where we slotted in the Amoresco payments, and according to Dave Valletta, the largest portion of that payment would come in, say, in the spring of twenty fourteen. Right. As um, part of the Amoresco agreement, they re agreed to reimburse us twenty five thousand dollars of our uh, closure cost expenses related to gas monitoring. So last year we recouped the full 25 from them, so we expect to do the same this, this year, and we expected that we would see about 10, maybe $11,000 a year in revenues from, or royalty payments from Amoresco. And trash bag sales are coming in below our projections so far this year. Um, the cell tower is above. And so far, I mean, it looks, we did project a loss in 2014 of $737,776. It looks like we're, so far, probably going to be on target with that. The expenses, um, the categories of debt, interest, direct and indirect payments, and the capital transfer, those are all sort of non-negotiable numbers. That's going to result that the uh, journal entry transfer will be made at City Hall for most of those amounts. So we know that those are solid, and as soon as those journal entries are made, we're probably going to have um, start running a, a negative balance. So that's about nine hundred thousand dollar journal entry that will happen at the first of the year or thereabouts. Right in, in yeah. January, they typically make those entries, and that again, that capital transfer amount of five hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight dollars is for the debt service payments through the end of the um, life cycle, which is twenty seventeen. So we're setting that amount aside so that we know that whether or not the landfill continues as a going concern, at least the debt and interest will be covered through their, life, right. their lifetime. As you probably recall, the last time we went over the financial assurance mechanism, we were looking at not just the post closure care of the landfill, but all the debt service that's been associated with the Southwest Enterprise Fund. And the first debt service that we have goes out to 2017, and that was a 20-year bond on capping the unlined landfill back in the mid-90s. So that's about it. Are there any questions? 
So where in the is the expense related to disposing of the trash that we collect in the bags? That is built into the O M budget of the transfer station. So we have budgeted for the waste management contract was uh, one hundred forty thousand dollars. We budgeted, mm -hmm. and that's part of that O M expense. Part of the three hundred and twenty thousand three hundred. That's correct. And the three hundred twenty is for the whole year. So. So if our bag sales are down, it also looks like our disposal costs are down. That's correct. And so it would correlate to bag that. sales being low doesn't necessarily mean the bag going up. I had another question regarding the FY13 numbers. Mm -hmm. it is is year-to-date actual where we think we'll come in once the audit's done? So that we ended up on the plus side. We did far more than we thought. We thought we'd sort of break even. We did, but I don't want you to think that that's going to be the amount that um, free cash is going to go up because there's a lot of. Um, I spoke with Susan Wright and um, Joyce in the auditor's office mm -hmm. to see if we could come up with some kind of a reasonable estimate of what might happen with free cash, and we just weren't comfortable because the OR has a lot of adjustments okay. that they make. Um, <coughs> And we just wanted to wait until they actually certified that number before we presented it. That's, that's a big number. 2.3 million? No, the, well, I'm looking at the 598,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, again, that year-to-date actual, that column that doesn't include any of the encumbrances that we carried over into 2014. So we had a lot of money that we had budgeted basically for OOM expenditures um, for the closure costs, and then we ended up not really spending as much as we anticipated in 2013, so we encumbered all of those costs over into 2014, right. knowing that we are going to close the landfill, and eventually that's going to be spent. And that's a big number. It is a big number. Any more questions for Anne-Marie? Okay. So I'm guessing that Terry asked for this so we could tell whether the transfer station was paying for, paying for itself. Yeah. And I can't tell from this. It's it's difficult at the moment. I yeah. mean, at the end of the year, I, I think that the some of the enterprise fund will be fine. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of with the second year, it's mm -hmm. going to be even more telling as to what's happening. This year is kind of our trial year, and as we close out the year books, we'll have a, a better picture. This is just a snapshot as of... September 30th, and we'd be happy to do it again as of December 30th. Mm -hmm. That way you're you kept the rest of what's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think I think he was just trying to get a, a look at where do we stand right now, and mm -hmm. we're going to, like Ned said, keep on up with this kind of analysis. But basically, because we did um, budget that large sort of loss mm -hmm. in 2014, we just want to make sure that that doesn't balloon into something that's going to use up all of our free cash. It looks like we're on on track for that too. So we're going to have a loss, but it's not going to be. A and just to follow up on what Ned said, I mean, this is a transitional year. We we've all agreed that there are too many balls in the air for us to you know get too bent out of shape unless we see something that's dramatically out of whack. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see that here, so. Mm -hmm. Like it's too soon to tell. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But it's good that we're looking at it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is the snapshot in time that Terry requested. I hope it's what you were looking for, even though it doesn't have the exact answers that we all want. It's, it's it gives an indication. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we circle around to it again in January, I think we'll, yeah. we'll be able to compare what's going on. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Right. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Are any of you, any other comments on the enterprise financial update? Uh, okay, so I guess we'll, do you want to do the update or the contest first? Yeah. That's completely up to you, how you want to run the agenda. Okay. Contract for Bradford Street Pump Station Force Main Replacement to Borges, Borges Construction in the amount of $279,127.50. Move approval. 
Questions? So we had seven contractors bid on this particular project. Um, let me start off with a little history. The Battery Station uh, force main broke this past year on Woodmont Road. Now, this is the force main that conveys all the waste streams from the local neighborhood and the uh, industrial park. It's about a 40 to 55 or 40 to 45 year old uh, asbestos uh, pipe, uh, eight inch diameter, and it just broke in two. So Jim and I discussed it, and we deemed this to be a project that we wanted to move fast forward with, um, try to get it done so we wouldn't have maybe another break this winter again. Um, so we had seven bidders on this project. The low bid was 253.506.25, uh, which was Jack Gonzalez and Son. We've had to throw in his bid out as a little bidder. Um, on item number one of this, uh, there was a mobilization, demobilization fee, and it couldn't be more than 5% of the rest of the unit items in the bid. Uh, he came in at 22% of the bid, so it was, uh, he wanted roughly a $56,000 demob fee when everyone else was in the ten dollars to $12,000 range. So uh, Joe Cook, we asked Joe Cook about this. He called the Inspector General's office, and they ruled that we had to throw out the low bid. So we're going with the second bidder, which is Borg's Construction, which is 279.125.7. The high bidder on this was F&J Construction for 295366 I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, and they're all, all very, very close together. Um, so anyways, um, we have done a reference check on Borg's, and um, we're looking to move forward with this contract. And the work should be done before winter sets. How big, a, um, how big an area is this going to cover? It's about 1,100 feet of uh, force being installed. Will this just be a, <clears throat> a trench patch? It will be strictly a temporary, a, actually it turns into a, a permanent trench patch. Okay. Uh, Woodmont Road is in very bad shape. Yeah. There's yeah. an 1890 something uh, water main in the street. Mm. And so I didn't want to invest in a full paving job without right. knowing that utility is going to be replaced also. Just to the board's aware of that. What What's the other one that's going to be replaced? That, you said that is also going to be replaced? I didn't say it was going to be replaced. We haven't evaluated it. It's an old 1890-something water main in the street also. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we didn't want to do a full pavement of the street, not knowing the condition of that and having it break in a year or two. But the force main is a permanent. Yes. And the way you phrased it, Ned, um, they made it sound like Borges is, is a new relationship for us. Is that it is for us. Uh, we did have a reference check from Woodward and Kern did it, and they had a reference check with West Springfield. It was a water main project, which had a... Um, a positive reference. The town of Westboro did a $1.3 million water main job with them and they were very happy with the results. And the last reference was for the town of Worcester, which was another $1.3 million sanitary surface and combined sewer project. Town of Worcester? City of Worcester, excuse me. <laughs> it was a town at one point, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Contracted Tate and Howard for the Water System Emergency Response Training in the amount of six thousand. Second. This is a requirement of DEP that we go through this exercise with our staff once a year. Um, last year we did it for the first time with Tate and Howard. We had two days of training here. It's three thousand dollars a day to get. Um, and it takes two days to get all our staff through the program, or all our water staff. Uh, Jim and I also attend these training sessions because we're kind of in charge in case there is an emergency that happens. So, um, this, like I said, this is a state requirement that we need to do. Do you go out to the water um, department after the... Actually, it's, uh, last year it was all done on this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, it consists of uh, basically... Uh, a, Basically, an overview of all the regs and uh, what we need to do. It has a left or a desktop training exercise with it too, which gives a couple kind of real life scenarios that we go through and 
make sure we we notify the proper people and doing the right things in that response. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Contract for non program options for the dump truck, dump truck vehicle to DNS Industrial Incorporated in the amount of eighteen thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars. Oh, second. <laughs> We're sleeping switch tonight, huh? I know we're trying to figure out what non-program options are. I was. So these are additional, um, if you recall right, we, for the 10-wheel dump truck that we purchased this past year approved, we bought an extended warranty for it. Mm -hmm. This is probably about six months ago. Oh, uh, right, yeah. This is the same thing. This is for a new six-wheel dump truck that's been ordered. And basically it's going to include the new Motorola radio, Corrosion resistance primer on the single frame rails and the extended warranties of the transmission, engine, electronics. Um, basically, it's a one year warranty that comes out with these vehicles. This will give us a five year warranty on these vehicles. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Change order number one to contract number 298-13 with Northern Construction Services LLC for the Water Street Bridge Scour Repair Project to extend the contract to April 30th, 2014. Move approval. Second. So this is just a time extension of the contract to wrap up some punctualist items on it? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Change order number one. Be opposed? Uh, change order number one to contract number 31313 with TSM Solutions LLC for the purchase of a leak detection survey to extend the contract to Halloween 2013. <laughs> approval. Uh, this is required by the state every few years we do this particular leak detection survey. So this is just extending the time frame to make sure the work's done in time. The contract had, had expired. So by next week will be enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Stormwater and flood control update. Well, I was hoping Terry was going to be here tonight. <laughs> um, basically, as everyone knows, it's this is solely moving through committees. Um, it's going to youth commission. Terry and I went there. Uh, we were supposed to go there last week, but the meeting was canceled due to not being po properly posted in time. So I believe it's going to be next Wednesday will be their next regularly scheduled meeting. I assume Terry and I will be attending that. It's being a uh, reference to EDLU, which is Economic Development and Land Use. Um, I don't know when they're picking up on their agenda. And of course the uh, Ordinance Committee is looking at it too. Um, it hasn't defined what the public process is going to be at this point or how where, I shouldn't say the public process, how many public meetings are going to be. There's been a strong suggestion that there be four meetings at four elementary schools in the city for all the wards to attend versus a, you know, seven different wards, seven different meetings, trying to consolidate a little bit. Um, uh, that's still up in the air. We've been asked to do a pamphlet, uh, a mailer to all the property owners of the city. A rough draft was looked at by the... Um, a conference committee on Monday afternoon. Uh, they've asked for some edits to it, which Jim has been working on. Hopefully that will be out in the next week or so and out to our uh, the citizens of Northampton. And um, I don't know how it's going to make its way through City Council, when it's going to be done. I know we're hoping for a goal to be done by the end of this calendar year, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen at this point. So were there any uh, were there any comments from the conference committee or concerns that they voiced? There were some friendly amendments put together by, um, I don't have them in front of me, by um, Jesse. Uh, Jesse Adams. And there were some comments from the uh, Chamber of Commerce also that they asked to be incorporated. Jim took those comments in. Um, it wasn't voted on, the comments were voted on. They wanted a little more thorough review to make sure that um, it wasn't, wouldn't underpin or change anything that we are or dramatically what we were doing. And did you have any comments to add to this? Uh, no, I actually arrived late at the conference committee because okay. my daughter was playing her senior in the night game. Okay. In the afternoon. Okay. 
Um, I'm not receiving notifications of these meetings, and I would, I don't know what the mechanism would be to do that, but I think that all the members of the uh, Stormwater Task Force ought to be absolutely notified about these. Um, particularly, you receive notification as part of the, the, no? So, I haven't seen anything yet. No. So, are you asked to, the committee be notified when it's either on an agenda item or, because that's what it was, it was strictly an agenda item on the conference committee? I'm not sure what the mechanism would be, but, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, for instance, I, I don't want to fall to Terry to make the phone calls to each of us that, that we have to that we have the opportunity to go. But I would, I would love to go to these ward committee meetings. And, you know, if I, if I don't know that they're happening, then... Are you talking about the public meetings that we're going to have? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they'll be very public. You, as a resident, will get mailing because of it. But but I'm sure that we'll be sharing the dates and the details. Okay. All right. So, All yes, right. absolutely. Uh, I, 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 I missed it. I thought you wanted to be at the conference committee meeting where we were talking right, about that's it. That's what I thought, That's too. what I thought, too. I'd like to know about its existence. Whether or not I, you know... Terry sent an email out on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, that all right. I got to go back and check. <coughs> yeah, he did. He sent an email on Monday saying that they were going to the conference committee and this is what they were going to be talking all right. about. It's Maybe very I clear what his agenda was. Okay. I thought it was a good email, actually. All right. My bad, then. <laughs> okay. It's tonight. Never mind. All right. <laughs> all right. Any more uh, comments on storm and flood control? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were second. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> So I did attend the conference committee, and I think Ned summarized it nicely. Um, I'd like to understand why the Youth Commission deals with this ordinance. Is there anything like yeah, because they're going to be paying for it in the future. There was a discussion at one point, I remember, saying that, that the cost of this is not going to be a short-term cost. It's going to be a long-term cost for the residents and future residents of Northampton. So they thought they would engage okay. the youth in it. And I actually think it's a wonderful idea. Youth Commission has been around for a while with that same month. Claire Higgins started it and um, Yeah, look at the website. I think it's a group of eighteen from the ages of thirteen to seventeen or something yeah. like that. And it and it's active and more active and less active depending on what's going on with their sister. It's usually a bunch of kids from the high school and my daughter's have so far. Uh -huh. I think some out of the woodwork for this one. Yeah. Okay, is that everything you want to discuss on the storm flood control update? Solid waste update? As far as the landfill goes, uh, uh, all the loam is down. They're actually in the process of getting to do the hydro sea. We changed the seed mixture to include a little more winter rye at this point because we missed our target date of October 15th to be seeded. We have gotten an extension from the state regarding this uh, um, this extension because we were supposed to be done by October 15th. So we wear that. Uh, good news today, now that the final membrane cap is on, we've been able to terminate our odor program. Oh, oh yeah. excellent. Yes. So oh, we've dismissed no. our odor sniffers and the contract <laughs> in the past few days. We are done. Have we actually spent anything on the odor campaign in the last year and a half? A very marginal amount of money. Yeah. It's been a while since we had a, a we've had some odors, but I hardly any. Actually, I take that back. I think only one of them was related to the landfill. The rest were zeros or not found when they went out there. So we've had nominal costs since uh, March of this past year, but mm -hmm. it's basically over with now. So that answers your question. Remember, you were saying, is there some point where we know where we can terminate yes, this contract? Exactly. And the answer is exactly. now. Yeah. Um, as far as solid waste updates, um, I met with the reuse committee. Um, we all can talk about the reuse committee, but we went over to the landfill to look at the existing uh, buildings over there for the reuse committee and uh, potential future uses out there. I thought. It sparked some energy in them. I think they were excited with what they saw and the potential they saw out there, rather than trying to cite something here that I think is problematic. Yeah. And I and I said to Ned already that I 
thoroughly appreciate you taking the time to come to the meeting because it totally turned the meeting around in terms of an attitude. I mean, there's a few dumb stuff that happens, but in terms of like trusting that the BP, BPW and the DPW are invested in the use. And so that has been an issue. Um, so. so it's a good thing you have, huh? Yeah. yeah. It was a good move. Well, I, I just can't give enough compliments to Susan and her energy and her sense of organization and systems. It's, a, it's such a huge relief. Um, I do want to say that one of the things I talked about, there was a flash mob recycling event at the Universal Fitness Center on Holly Street. And it was organized by a couple people that were part of the reuse committee, and three of them showed up. and. There was nothing left, and uh, over a hundred people, I forget exactly how many, showed up, but people took daycare stuff, Universal Fitness, Universal Fitness Center itself has moved to Service Center Road, but um, uh, there was stuff left in the building that the Arts uh, Council was going to take over, so, so it was a very successful event, and then there was a Halloween uh, costume exchange, uh, for something like uh, there was a letter to the editor in the paper about bringing, bringing life back from the dead. Or I forget it exactly. Yes, but, exactly. That. Yeah. <laughs> and but it was the fact that 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 was an event we did not think would happen at all. But people did pull it together and have it. There's huge amount. I mean, I do Facebook with the students and stuff. But the the Facebook account is really generates a lot of interest and response and and, and um, enthusiasm. So that's, that's, that's something that's in terms of um, PR. Of course, my And then there'll be another event on uh, November 9th. So, um, so the Reuse Committee's doing events, and now they're sort of interested in, in Glendale Road. So we'll, we'll look forward to that. The marketing for the, uh, uh, the, the event on last Saturday was excellent. You know, and I, yeah. I just want to yeah. echo your praise of yeah. Susan and the committee getting that together. Right, and actually the, the Universal Fitness was a Saturday before that, so mm -hmm. there was two events since we last met. Any other questions about solid waste? Uh, you have a question on something we already addressed? And it's really minor. That's all right. But the contract for the dump truck accessories mm -hmm. um, is with G. G and S oh, it's industrial. E and S. In our agenda, it says B and S. So the contract's right. Yeah. But I don't know if we need to. Do we need to uh, well address the fact that that should have been G and S, but that we all all agree that as passed, it should stand. Any yeah. opposed to that? Okay. okay. Special acknowledgement to Michael, please. Attention to details. Diligence. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I looked at the agenda three times. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Private ways. Uh, private ways. I've seen. I actually received the updated assessors list for all the properties of the ones we had a no recommendation for. So those certified letters should be going out hopefully on Friday. Uh, we're working on those and the. The rest of the private ways that you gave a re yes recommendation would just get a regular mail letter saying that we would continue our activities. Uh, just so the board knows, there has been a, a concern of center court. Uh, the residents of center court are uh, talking with city councilors and they're trying to find a way to have their particular private way become a public way, just so you're aware of that. Other than that, I haven't heard from any of the other streets that we had, had no recommendation for at this point. Is there any chance that the center court issue is going to come back to us? Or is it just now with the council? Let's put it this way. You've already made your recommendation mm -hmm. um, that council might ask you to reconsider or the council could say, yes, we want to accept it and direct me uh, or DPW to create the proper documents for street acceptance. Gotcha. Thank and you. they overrule us, so that would right. be right. Right. That's, that's their prerogative. They have that ability by right. the ordinance. Right. Um, the 35 private ways that were given a res yes recommendation, they've all been moved to the surveyor at this point. Um, and we are working on trying to get all the field survey work done before snow flies, and that way we have the winter to do all the paperwork and uh, takings or easements, whatever we're going to do on these particular ways. And I'm really hoping by springtime this will all be wrapped up. Okay. Yeah. So, 
So, do you feel capable of taking Jim's place and telling us about Pulaski Park? I can to some degree. Um, there was a presentation to CPA. <laughs> it went um, fairly well, I think. There was concerns about expending this amount of money on design services and then start looking for construction money. Uh, the mayor was there to support the project. Uh, Terry Cohen was there supporting the project, and Jim Laurel did most of the speaking on it. I thought it went okay. I guess time will tell. There is a meeting on October 30th, mm -hmm. which is the public comment period, or the public participation period in the CPA, or mm -hmm. the CPC, and we'll see if any comments come out of it on the 30th. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make it on that one. I could not make it on yeah, the Yeah, I could do either. So, um, I'll, <coughs> I'll let you know when. I mean, Simpson Associates was there. They did a wonderful, I thought it was a good presentation. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think money is their concern at this, po at this time, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, you have a, a, a gem of a park down there that mm -hmm. needs some work. Yeah. Chris? Um, and I felt bad that I couldn't make that, um, that particular meeting, but um, either the day before or the same day, um, an article ran in the Gazette about the meeting that had gone on about the Roundhouse. Mm -hmm. um, and it would seem to me that there's a natural linkage between those two initiatives, um, and that anybody who wants to do um, private development of the roundhouse might find themselves in a favorable position if they were offering something that had to do with Pulaski Park. And I, I don't know what that would look like, but given the fact that there are adjoining pieces of property um, and you were looking for a buy-in to, to do the work uh, at the foot of the stairs, um, the fact that you might, you know, pony up some money for, for the broader initiative might, might be beneficial. And I don't know how we would go about um, soliciting that, but it, it just seems, you know, the two things are running in parallel, but it doesn't seem to me that there's any connection between the two initiatives at this point. So, um, I, I think that, I, I mean, as far as I know, the discussion has just started again about the roundhouse. Mm -hmm. So I, and there's, right. there's just concern about how long a decision will take before something new happens there. The sense is <clears throat> that the park isn't, you know, do we stop and not do anything on the park until we know what's happening on the house, or do we just proceed in good faith with the park, which is a critical public space for the town? And, and I understand the linkages entirely, yeah. but I, I think that it would be, um, uh, that it might be, challenging for us to try to stop and to wait and to yeah. engage what might be happening yeah. on the roundhouse. I don't want Jim to take his foot off the gas. No, no, I, I, to something. And I agree. It's too and critical I, of a space. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not conversant enough in the <clears throat> issue, I'm in either of the issues to, but it just seemed to me as I was reading this article and then, you know, mm -hmm. I, it just, how, how do we not combine the two? No, it's an excellent question yeah. to pose, but I think, you know, I think that things yeah. are so up in the air in terms of what's going to happen <coughs> on the roundhouse. Yeah. And the, and the time frame and the finances for whatever we Yeah, it's only been going on for, what, 20, 20 years? years? <laughs> 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 All right. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> you said that there's a public meeting on the 30th? Yes. Where, where and when? Uh, 7 o'clock, uh, Council Chambers. And I might just mention that the last time that this uh, came up, well, we were not for the Preservation Committee, but um, where the... BPW worked hard to get a um, redesign at Pulaski Park. There was also, that is when the um, uh, Hampshire, um, I'm going to forget their exact name, but the, the potential development was going to occur, occur in the Roundhouse parking lot at the time. So that was also on the horizon, but um, we decided to put that aside because for the same reasons. Okay, thank you. Any more on Pulaski Park? Capital Improvement? Um, I made a presentation on behalf of the Department of Public Works last Wednesday night at the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, everyone gets a chuckle when I show up there because it's usually a $60 million five-year plan for us uh, with all our needs, predominantly the DPW complex, but uh, fleet uh, for uh, vehicles for our general fleet predominantly was another big cost. Um, miscellaneous other things, um, new lifting stations for lifting vehicles next door. Um, 
some uh, metal fabrication devices, things of that nature. We actually put in uh, four and a half million dollars each year for the next five years for paving. It was in there also. That was a big component of the 60 million. And uh, went as far as to um, uh, request for 500,000 to repair the Clement Street Bridge. A number of different things. I can, I've can. i scanned all those documents. If you'd like me to send them to you, I can do that. Though you can see the idea of the type of requests that we've been making for the past few years to the uh, City Council. <coughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I would too. Mm. Yeah, just to, you know, have them and get me scan over and there's, there's not there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of money left in capital improvements these days with the police station, but right. we've been very fortunate in the past few years to secure anywhere between three to four hundred thousand dollars for new general equipment for dump trucks, um, things of that nature that we have a uh, need for uh, this year's request is replacing um, three trucks that have ranged from, I think, 1983 to 1987 that we're still working and plowing with. I saw one today that had to be a nice military thing. Very heavy, very large dump truck. And it was orange? It was orange, yeah. And it sounded like it had an automatic transmission, which I thought was kind of weird. We don't have much military fleet left, but <clears throat> one of our large trucks is still an old military truck. That's probably the one you saw. Okay. It was huge. Yeah. Hmm. And not new. No. Although it looked like it was in decent shape. Um, most of the stuff we get from the military runs fine. The body work is usually pretty rough because they've sat for so long. Uh, it, but it looked actually, it looked pretty good. I, it didn't look like it was freshly painted either, but it was, you know, it wasn't full of holes. Mm -hmm. But it was big. No problem, orange point. Paint can't solve. That's right. So I'll send that out to each one of you. Jerry, do you have anything on your mind? I got a phone call today from somebody named Ann at the DPW looking for a contact at Smith to cut down some trees along the Nova Bridge. So I gave her back and tried some information. So I think it sounds like she was working on Army Corps stuff. Yes, this is the contract with Northern Construction that you right, signed. She mentioned that. And um, we're trying to get them activated so they get done and get the majority of the work done this fall yep. before snow flies. Chris, do we need to extend the committee meeting so that you can eat your candy bar? Um, this is actually because I'm a type 2 diabetic. And, in <laughs> case, and I've actually been on new medication, and so my blood sugar fluctuates wildly. So... <laughs> This is actually prepared. Okay. This is like in case, in case of emergency break class. <laughs> that is so lame. <laughs> Anything else on your mind? No, I'm good. Thank we you. still want you to bring me. <laughs> I'm all set. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't even try. There is time for a nap, right?